Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kevin Lee. So today, I'll be learning karate for the first time from the Karate Nerd. I mean, it's the first time anybody's called me the Karate oh, Nerd, uh, but I think it means me. Do you mean him? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. technically, he's he he is a karate and he is a nerd. So that well, feels, he is. That feels. Yeah. But you're not the Karate Nerd. This is the karate nerd. Well, I'm nerdy about karate. Right, you I'm just not called a me a nerd, though. Yeah. He's you're nerdy about karate, you just called me a nerd. You separated the two things and it made it worse for me. All these guys are nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so, please teach me karate. I have never done karate before. Even though Jesse has told me wow. I know karate. You know karate. I don't know karate. I can't teach you something you already know. Right. The problem is you don't know that you know it. Okay. Okay. So, let's say you're fighting somebody. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to attack you. Okay. Uh, with a self-defense technique. I want you to just do your natural move mm -hmm. to defend against the technique. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do like this. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go like that. Okay, keep going. What would you do? Okay, keep going, keep going. Keep defend, going. defend, defend. Keep going with, okay, okay. Now, now, just do that. The exact same moves, but without me. Mm. Okay, slowly. What was the first thing you did? I blocked the hand. Yeah. And I stab and turn. Right. And then wait. I, okay, I keep on. Yeah, yeah. And I stab and then right. I toss you to the ground. Exactly. Now, if we just imagine this being taught to a group of people solo, just like you did, mm -hmm. and then let it go, maybe one or two hundred years. Imagine what it would look like today. Oh. It would be a kata or a form. Interesting. The problem is most people never learn this part of how to use it against somebody. Mm. Because we put the cart before the horse today. Mm. For, if you taught just those things to somebody without explaining what you were doing, mm -hmm. would they know that it was a defense against collar grab and haymaker? Probably, Probably not. not. Yeah. They would have to guess, well, what, what could this be? Oh, maybe it's a cross step. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm throwing somebody, then I go to, into a front stance, yeah, look, maybe it could be a throw. Wow. But we don't know because many of the applications of kata mm. have been lost in the sands of time. That's so that's why I say you already know karate without knowing it because it's hidden in plain sight. That, that makes so much more sense. Yeah. So when you say teach me karate, I'm like, you already know it. You just don't know it. So what makes karate unique? And that's, I guess that would be my question mm -hmm. in terms of kicking, punching, defenses. Honestly, I think there's not many things in karate that are unique. Because I view karate like just one path up a, a big mountain. Mm -hmm. So when you're starting out, when you're a white belt, it mm -hmm. looks very different to other stuff. Like that's Muay Thai, that's uh, BJJ, Kung Fu, Wushu, whatever, right? Yes. Because the paths are very, paths are very uh, far from each other at the bottom of the mountain. But the closer you get, mm -hmm. as you climb the mountain, eventually, they come together because it's all the same at it's the like highest level. Win. Yeah, they converge, right? Because there's only one peak or summit and we're all looking at the same moon. I think Bruce Lee said something like, yep. when you point at the moon, don't focus on the finger, right? You pass beyond the finger. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's not what you do, but how you do it. Okay. Which is why I don't view karate as something unique, really. Mm. Because I can see karate in any martial art. You just have to know what you're looking for. That's, wow. Yeah. Like my actual teacher, my Sifu, okay. he said the same thing. Really? It is not what you learn, it's how you do it. Yeah. And you guys like, you guys click for me when you say like, when you do things, eventually come together. Yes. For him, he said everything's Wing Chun. Exactly, so he says everything is Wing Chun, I say everything is Karate. But we're both talking about the exact same thing. That is so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm not saying I'm at the top of the mountain with your master. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just great. saying this is my experience. Yes, what sir. I've observed from other masters, and I would probably recognize the same if I met your master one day. Correct, yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. So what can you teach me? Well, what do you struggle with? That's a better question for me, because when I teach students, I want to help them improve something they feel like they're bad at. So distancing. let's say distancing. Distancing. Okay. What is the problem with distancing? With taller people, how, do you, how are you able to engage and disengage? Okay. So, I mean, so let's say we're for fighting, For obvious right? reason, <laughs> there's a size difference. In karate, generally, you want to take space or make space, mm. which means footwork is essential, right? Because you don't want to be right here. Correct. Okay, so uh, let's try an exercise. So we're going to do two exercises. One to teach you to stay 
inside and I want to teach you to stay outside. Okay. okay these are the two kind of distances we want to have, right? Because both are considered safe in the context of fighting, mm -hmm. or at least safer than being here, okay. where anything can happen. Correct. Right. So, I'm gonna just tie this on your belt, like this, and then I'm gonna tie the other end around my belt, ah. like this. And now the point of this exercise is to just move in unison with my friend. And if the belt is not tense like this, then we're failing the exercise. We want to keep the tension intact, like this. And one can lead and the other tries to follow. Let's say I lead, okay? So if I move back, yeah, if I move this way, oh. right, right, right. If I go sideways here, if I switch stance, you try to switch as well. This is hard. Yeah. And that's the point, right? If it was easy, you wouldn't have to practice oh, it. Oh, that's cool. So, you want to keep this distance, right? Just like in a real fight. So that's the first exercise. Next, mm. we do kind of the opposite. So I take the belt off, and now we make it into a giant circle, okay? This way. And now we're both gonna be inside of the belt instead. So, maybe this belt is too small. Maybe, too small. maybe this is too much. Okay, but the idea is the same, okay? We wanna stay inside like this. Moving around, this is, this is almost like a clinch, right? Exactly, yep. But we, now we want to maintain the tension exactly. Yep, yep. So these are two simple exercises to teach you distance management using a belt. And then the hardest part is going between these two in a real fight. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna teach you one technique called Nagashitsuki, Nagashitsuki. which is like, a, yeah, uh, many people call it like a blitzing move, or something oh. like this. So, far away from me, I'm gonna go from here to very close, and the question is how? Mm -hmm. So I want you to imagine throwing a cross, but like you're falling or being pulled. So throw a slow cross. Slow cross. And I'm just gonna pull you, and without moving, let me just pull, 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 Without moving, oh, without moving, yeah, can you turn more? Yeah, engage your hips, oh. your shoulder, and at the very last moment when you feel like you're about to fall, then you step and catch yourself. Oh. Exactly. So this is something you use, especially when the opponent is coming towards you. So you crash into him. So you're rotating your body to the maximum. Yeah. And until you have both. Except without having to step. Without having to step. Because usually you step, the opponent sees it. Mm. But now it's kind of like, bam, bam, bam. I'm already here without even trying. Because I'm just using gravity. And That's just go. cool. Yeah, right? That is so fast, I couldn't recognize it. But I was just relaxed, right? So imagine going full speed in a real fight. And the trick is, a lot of people think they're safe at this distance. Uh -huh. Like it's super far away. You don't feel threatened right here, uh -huh. right? Except when I go here, bam, 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 it's already over. Wow. So that's a great technique that I think I like you could that. try. Okay. Yeah, to help you with the distance management. Okay. In a real fight. I like yeah. that. So you really your goal is just try to go with the rotation. Yes, exactly. And kind of fall over your front foot like mm -hmm. this. And then, 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 then you catch yourself just as you're about to fall. You step. Nice. Yeah, and you pull it back, and then you use the other hand to control. Oh, nice. Exactly. Where do you guys attack in terms of the punch? Oh, the, the face, the body. So, so this is a high punch. It goes mm. to the face. Yeah, nice. exactly. Right. Are you okay? I'm, I'm good. Just, I'm good. Sorry, I <laughs> should wear gloves. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I think that's uh, that's some advice that you could use. But I we like have that. also more basic exercises that you mm -hmm. could do um, without the belt, which would just be to mirror your opponent. Right, so imagine the same thing, I'm, I'm uh -huh. leading, I go like this, yeah, I switch stance, oh. go sideways, if I level change, you level change, oh. right? Same idea, yeah, exactly. This is management, it's all about having this kind of idea in mind as you move to pay attention to your opponent's positioning at all times. That is awesome. Yeah. Thank good you. to hear. That was very, very yes. good. You know what I know when I have a black belt in? You know what I have a black belt in, Sensei? is addressing YouTube trolls and haters and commenters. Oh, do it. Because what they're gonna do when they see this lesson, I know the answer, because I'm 
I'm a black belt in North American street fighting myself. Right. <laughs> I know the answer. Okay. But they're going to say that what you're instructing Kevin to do is to throw himself off balance. Mm -hmm. Right? And now I'm off balance when this happens. Yeah. So what would you say to those haters? Why not? Why not throw yourself off balance? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Because you chose to do that. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's the problem. They'll be like, he's off balance. We're talking about karate from a self-defense perspective. Well, just the, just the purpose, just the whole idea of like, everyone's so rigid. I think a mediocre, mediocre martial artists who think their feet have to, they were taught that their feet can never ever cross, they can never but ever switch them. Yeah, they rap. confuse being rigid with stable. I can still be stable if I'm in balance. Oh, this guy is like a, a <laughs> sound, he's a sound bite dispenser. Yeah. Like just, you pop yeah. his little Pez head open and like a fucking, Wait, you could drop the music that? right there at the end of every sentence this guy says. Audiobook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, repeat that one more time. No, 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 no. What he just said. We don't repeat things over here. Oh. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for. And in karate, Jesse we karate. do it like this, right? So oh, this would sorry. be like Thai boxing, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So we do it like this. Heels together. Yes. Hands on the side. And we bow. And we say Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you so Arigato much. Arigato gozaimashita. Perfect. Jesse, is there any rule about karate belts on the floor? Is there any actual rule? I want to ask about that too. What I know is you shouldn't step over a belt. Oh. It's supposed to be. If oh, it's I, like this. I've never heard that one. Yeah. You don't um, step over belts or weapons. I've had lots of people be like, your belt's not supposed to go on the floor. I want to ask about that too, because I've heard that before. I think that in, is... In Cook Suwan, we weren't allowed to put our belts on the floor. If our belt hit, our floor, hit the floor, it was 10 push-ups. I think mm. that is magical nonsense. Is it? No, sir. I is think there, the belt is... there anything okay. in Okinawa yeah. yeah. that's like, your belt is a pristine... Important. Well, it's like that with every, or everything, not okay. just a belt. I do oh. It's like you respect question. stuff oh, in okay. general. I do have a question about the belt too. So is it true that in Japan or in karate yeah. that you start out with a white belt and the reason why it becomes a black belt is because you train so hard, you sweat, your dirt gets on it, that's what th there's a different color that kind of gets darker and darker? That's what they say. Is that if it's true or not, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard as far as... Maybe William knows. It goes white, That's what I've heard, too. Yeah. And then it becomes red with blood. Blood, yes. And then it becomes brown from the dried blood. And then eventually it becomes black from, I guess, more dirt. But... That's what I heard, too. That's... Okay. What people have said. Okay. It's not even necessarily what I've heard from karate people. But it's, is it karate-ish? I don't know. Yeah, okay. 